maybe explain a little bit of a 101 for anyone who doesn't quite understand the the splits between you're talking about the masters the you have the master the publisher has this um and then maybe elaborate further into the contracts and the deals totally so um i i always tell people like this a song has two parts right like i, I always use this example as like how many people have ever walked in a grocery store and heard like the super corny, cheesy cover song? You're just like, who like actually recorded this thing? <laughs> and the reason I use that is because, you know, that cover is an example of a, of a song that has a different recording. So the original songwriters to that still own that copyright. The copyright never changes. So one side of it is whether it's the original song. So like, let's just use, a, let's use a popular song right now. Uh, Justin Bieber song right whoever wrote that composition is always going to own that so even if I decide I'm going to go cover this song I don't own any of the publishing so the publishing and copyright is the original song like whatever that song is and then what the recording becomes or the master becomes is that actual recording so the most popular recording tends to be what made that song the song that it is so you know if you're listening to as long as you love me by Justin Bieber that version is owned by Island Records. Um, but it doesn't mean that I can't go cover it and make my own recording. So I try to say that like songs are divided into two parts. You have the copyright or the composition, and then you have the recording. So recordings can change, but copyright stays the same. Did I say that clear? Does that kind of make sense? Yes, to me. If anyone has any questions about that, you can put that in the chat box and we can address it. Awesome. Yeah, so always... Yeah, sorry, go ahead. So always view it as that. And and that's why like, you know, what I've started to notice, there's a big trend happening right now in licensing where you're seeing a lot of older songs be um, covered by new artists. So they're kind of reimagining those covers. So whoever owns those copyrights, they're still clearing the copyright, whether it's the original version or, you, you know, this new covered version, because they still own those copyrights. But instead of maybe going to Atlantic Records and clearing the original, whoever owns that new recording is actually clearing that master. So there's there's always two sides to a song. It will be your copyright, and then it will also be your recording as well. And it's there's always got to be a clearance for that. So, you know, if you're with a publisher, a publisher will generally look after your copyright. So they'll clear your publishing. But for a song to go into TV, film, or wherever there's still a recording element that has to be cleared for that. And that's whoever owns the recording. So in my case, early on, it was Cameron, it was, you know, the clients that actually recorded it. So I was clearing the recordings while the publisher was clearing the copyright. Right. So. And so you can do that from the management perspective, you're clearing the masters for the music supervisors who are requesting use of the song. Yep. So they're coming to me saying, Hey, um who owns this master and i say cameron does as his manager i'm going to clear it on his behalf right you know and so one of the things that i've started to do with some of my clients is we've started you know we're, we're it's very early days but we actually just started this side of the year um was a was a small record label called swim team records and our first release was actually in january and it came out because we had a 10-week pga tour promo um, so we wanted to put it out around the promo and it's like a new artist we're launching and it's, it's, it's a lot of fun, but that's something else that like through the experience of being able to do that as a manager, I've been able to kind of come in and work with that expansion idea, which is like, why don't we start a label? Like instead of this stuff, just all kind of being whatever, let's establish a brand for your recordings that start to fall under this umbrella that develops a brand, just like Atlantic Records is a brand or Capitol Records is a brand. So yeah, it's all about experience and just knowledge and just going further. And and the thing that I love that I, I love to point out is if you're honest with a lot of these people who are trying to clear stuff with you, they'll help you. Like I think, you know, early on, I would ask the clearance people or the music supervisor people like, what is this like? What like what exactly does this mean? Like, do you need it like this? And nine times out of 10, they'll just pick up the phone and go, this is what I need. Can you just do it? Mm -hmm. And normally it's it's pretty straightforward then. So when you're kind of starting out, don't be afraid to ask questions because most people who are in those positions, they just want it done right. And they're willing to help you, especially if it's something they need to do. So that's something I tend to throw in there too as well.
Absolutely. It's so true, especially with music supervision, because it is complicated. You are dealing with these intense um, contracts. You're dealing with these massive brands sometimes, and they need it done perfectly. And if you're just pretending you know what's going on, you're going to screw somebody over. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They don't, they don't want to come back to you. I remember uh, I had someone that said it to me one time. I think it was one of the, uh, the supervisors at this company called Deutsch. It's like a big ad agency. And the guy was just like, I just don't want to do it twice. I want to do it once and do it right. And I, that's always stood out to me when you know, I'm dealing with people. It's like nine times out of 10, they just want it right. They don't want to have to like figure it out. So like, you know, I always say like the best character trait in this whole business is humility. Like just be willing to like ask questions when you don't know answers. Mm -hmm. um, and most people will remember that they really have been in a similar place where they haven't known all the answers themselves. So they're more than happy to, to be, you know, someone that can help guide you through it while you're figuring it out. And eventually you'll get to a place where you just understand it. And it's like, you see the master request and you're like, cool terms, usage, territory, fee, this type of use, cool, sign in, see you later. So it's, it does get better, but I think early on when you're kind of tapping into it, make sure you're not just rushing through it or trying to be, you know, the guy that knows it all, like be willing to humble yourself and ask questions if you have them. Mm -hmm. That would be my advice. And music supervisors understand how complicated that world is. And it's very intimidating to a lot yeah. of people. So they are, they're willing to sit there with you and help you figure it out. Completely. But, Let's right now maybe help a little bit, help people a little bit before they talk to supervisors. Talk a little bit more about what you just said about the deal, the contract, the terms, the times, all that. Yeah. So whenever you see a sync request, like, you know, there's two types of requests that will come in. They'll, they'll generally issue you a request based off what they're looking to clear it for, um, which will, you know, kind of outline the term, which is, you know, the, the when they can use it. Some terms are for a day. Um, I just saw a request literally um, earlier today that was for a private stream for two days on an ABC thing. It's like for ABC, like private streaming, two day usage. You know, I've also done something with ABC and Disney that was for, you know, a trailer that could run for six months. So like the first thing you're kind of looking at is like how long and when can they use this? And then the second of it is, is that's like the length in which they can go use it. Then it's what's the length of the actual song? Is it 30 seconds of your song? Is it 90 seconds of your song? Like how long is it, are they actually pulling from your song? So it's not just how long can they like advertise it or use it in something, but how much of your song are they actually using? And then it kind of becomes this like territory can they just do it in the US? Can they do it in Canada? Can they do it in the world? Like where can they kind of put this piece that they're licensing and where can they put it? And based off just those three things, it will vary how much the fee is. Because if I'm using it, it across the world for you know half your song um, in perpetuity, that's gonna cost a lot more than I'm gonna use 30 seconds of your song for 30 days in just the US. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So you're kind of looking for like just the details of what their what their interest is and what they're trying to do. And then normally, you know, there's there's maybe a couple of other things with it, but then it's kind of like the breakdown of like the request. And some companies will say, hey, we're hoping to clear this at, and they'll give you the rate at which they're trying to clear it for. Some companies they, they just won't say what it is. They'll just say, what do you want to clear this for? Um, so this is me being honest, you know, I think the market changes a lot. So it's like, when I see something that's open ended, the first thing I do is call the publisher and say, what's the market in your mind for the master? Because the master in the publishing should always be quoted the same. They should never be like, uh, you shouldn't clear something for more than the other. I, th I always view them as equal. So if I'm going to clear the master at $2,000, the publishing should clear for $2,000. So I kind of like a unwritten general rule with this. And so if I know the publisher then is saying, hey, we're probably gonna quote this at like $3,000, I'm gonna go back and say, okay, we'll quote this master at $3,000. Because I'm trying to have the master and the publishing be the same budget. So one's not more than the other to take away from the other. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And then they would pay both. Yep, yep. So then they would, they would pay me 
or whoever well technically the the songwriter uh publisher would take the publishing money and then you know we would collect on the master side so they have to pay both sides because both things require some type of fee 